if you recognize up front that it can't be you all the time, even if you wake up at five in the morning, you can't do it all yourself. The young adults will try to do everything. Let me explain why that doesn't work. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Mr. Keegan, how are you? Busy today. How about you? Oh, super busy. Good thing. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so a couple of questions that I was just kind of want to start with and then a little bit curious about. Um, yeah. I talked about it a lot, but like, what's the biggest issue that you see small businesses, specifically younger people, um, have with digital marketing? Wow. Where do we start? Will we be more specific on the type of small business? We'll say the typical agency, cold email or short form or anything along those lines. We focus more on flexing than on actually delivering and being able to operationally fulfill, get work done. Usually when it's started by a young adult, that young adult is the figure of home. And because they might be eloquent enough to be able to sell, because they're motivated because they see other people that are doing it, they don't realize they have to build a team. And without systems and projects and routine, then whoever is the salesperson closing the deal, if that's the ground this thing, is also the person who has to do the work. And the work needs to be done by other people. Because if, if you're the one doing the work, you don't have an agency for consultants. So Fair scaling enough. up what you do to be repeatable. I see a lot of these cold emails, social media, video resurfacing, short forms, Facebook ads, TikTok, these sorts of agencies. They put out something that's a feature. Like the feature is they do high level. The feature is they do Google ads. The feature is they do short form video. But that doesn't apply to a particular customer. When you don't do it for a particular customer, you end up doing it for nobody. But so the specialization by a tool or by a function is not the same thing as solving a problem for a particular type of customer. Let me give you an example. My friend Walton Hong runs Ring Ring Marketing at points in just six, seven years and just started with the know, We've got maybe 300 clients that pay him a couple thousand dollars a month. So he's coming up on seven figures a month. Of yeah. declaring revenue from services just feel normal because he knows feel normal homes really well and he knows how to drive leads that's why it's called ring ring marketing his retention rate is 99 percent of market okay so he's doing really well he's got a solid reputation you go to any conference with funeral homes and he's well known in fact there's no other choice really that he's the obvious choice if you're a funeral home you can go but okay. contrast that, if he decided that he wanted to be a Google PPC guy, or he wanted to be a um, ClickFunnels guy, or be like whatever, then he has no appeal for any particular customer type, which means A, it's tough to market, and B, it's tough to deliver. Because if you're doing cold email for 10 different clients, and each client is in a different industry, you have to have 10 different agencies. Basically, that kind of goes back to like the lighthouse model that you talk about all the time is obviously mm -hmm. find find the top person, whatever it is in a given industry, and then just kind of go down from there. Yeah, because when you take it the top person, all the people that are in that same industry want the same thing. And so I know that we've talked about this a few times, but for anybody else um, that doesn't know the Lighthouse Method or what that is, can you just describe it a little bit and how would you get started? If you had to start from zero, no network, no connections, anything like that. Well, Keegan, I'd love to hear you describe it. Okay. So light, the Lighthouse model is, as I just mentioned, it's finding the top player, person, business in any industry. So as an example, we'll say sports teams in North America, we could go with the top NBA team. So that could be the Golden State Warriors. So you try and connect with them, say you work with them, get them as a client. Now everybody else is gonna follow because you're trusted, you're credible because you're working with them. You must know what you're doing. That's right. So we had the Golden State Warriors for, as our client for five and a half years, and it was great. And there was no need to ever sell them. But the guy who became the CMO, the first day he got that job, he called me. And Kenny Lauer and I and friends prior to that for like yeah. another 10 years. So we've known each other a really long time. So it's all based on relationships. A lot of young adults don't understand the power of building these relationships. And you don't have to be old. It doesn't take a long time to build good relationships. But because of what happened with the Warriors, and us you know, coming in with this CMO with the client, and not getting access to all the analytics, Think about this. The Golden State Warriors are basically a San Francisco team. And that means that Google employees want to come to the game. Google employees want to see the Warriors do well. Mark Zuckerberg wants to see 
the Warrior 16 with Facebook. Samsung is doing it. So I would fly in San Francisco every couple of weeks and I would meet with the folks from Instagram, Google, Samsung, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, because they didn't want to roll out new tests for the Warriors. They're not going to roll it out for the Cleveland Cavaliers. They're going to roll it out for their local team because they're going to come over. Where's it? I remember one Saturday morning, we were over at but the practice was a little, and all the players were, were practicing, which is really kind of cool. And there's no like fans or whatever because it's a private sort of thing. So, you know, I'm yeah. sort of part, I'm part of the coaching team in a little bit. So they, they give me sort of this special access. There was some YouTube, like Google, YouTube part of Google, some of these YouTube employees. And we were talking about, hmm, wouldn't it be really cool if we should live stream there? Some of the Warrior thing. And I thought, that's really cool. And they said, yeah, let's do that. In fact, we'll give you another, we'll do that. Like, we'll donate all the time and the people and all that. And we'll give you $50,000 of Google ad credits to be able to promote that. And I, all right, you're going to use $50,000. I could probably turn that into a million dollars worth of tickets there. Probably like, you know, uh, one to 20, like 20 ROAS. And I remember I was at Facebook one time and literally they made some new, like Samsung was there. Or it's one of these virtual reality Oculus glasses where you could see around the court as if you were like right there in the middle of the court. And we were seeing like, well, when should we show the player stats? Or where do you turn to the side and you could like buy ice cream or other stuff or like, things not related to the game and then back to uh, follow a player, look at the stats, see how many miles per hour, how many inches they're jumping, the, the 37 degree arc of Steph Curry's free throw or, or you know, the replay scenes. Or, so I'm having an incredible experience speaking because it's a lighthouse client. And because of that, all the other sports teams said, wow, you know, Dennis and well, his team are doing a fantastic job where they help out. So the folks in the Chicago Bowl, the Houston Rockets, the Cleveland Cavaliers, the LA Lakers, all the large teams to us and said, hey, can you help us fix our fish again? Can you help us figure out you know, what's going on with our tipping master's conversion tracker. So all of that is inbound. Oh. So you see the difference, Keegan, between those teams, those ideal clients coming to me versus me, like, trying to get a meeting with these other people. Yeah, exactly. That's the difference with the my life. Exactly. We documented it. Mark Zuckerberg talked about a case study that first year. We spent a million dollars and we drove $38 million approval ticket master ticket revenue. For Ticketmaster is talking about what they And then I spoke at conferences all over the world talking about the one out of the law. And you could even go to YouTube and take how many times have you ever seen it through? And law don't the, the Facebook ad account of the lawyer. And I'll say, let's see how many tickets can serve the world. Let's look at how the odds are structured. I've yeah. never seen anybody do that in the pockets for a major company logging in. Let's go log into the Google Analytics and see how many people joined our email list today. Right. Uh, we have 3.6 uh, 3. million people on there on an email list. We have uh, 35,000 season ticket holders and whatever it might be. Like, let's see how I also put photo. Let's see how we rank on certain keywords. Let's see. Like, so you never, you never see them log in, like live, log yeah. into a big account and show off the stats, right? Yeah. And so then I learned that the power of the light now is not me logging in and doing that. I'd have the head of digital marketing. I had the head of social media in the Warriors log in, present at the conference, do a webinar, be on stage, and that made me look good. That's the power of the lighthouse. The lighthouse does the marketing for you if you do a good job, if you document what you do. The whole lighthouse thing is why you frown upon cold outreach too, because on top of that, you also lose credibility. I mean, I know I've been guilty of it. That's how I've essentially gotten to where I'm at right now in the business is strictly through cold outreach and then delivering for clients. But it just it puts you in a position where it's like on a call you have to sell them because you're convincing somebody to get on a call, like to work with you, whatever it is, because it's just the whole process. You're not credible in any sort of way, so it's just it screws the relationship right from the start unless you really over deliver. Yeah. And but if I'm looking at hiring, speaking policy, also I know something about you know what a good client is that someone I know and respect. I'm still going to Google you, but yeah. what I'm gonna, what will I find when I Google people policy and vision management? <laughs> Hockey stuff. Not even think about n- nothing demonstrating good marketing right? Yeah. But if you Google me, you see lighthouse at the lighthouse at the lighthouse. Exactly. I want everyone to see that. I want the clients 
to do the top informant. Cold email, email marketing, short form SEO is like at the bottom of everybody's list. But it's crazy, like you just mentioned, it's like even if you're even if you cold outreach somebody, you get somebody on a sales call, like you said, they're gonna Google you at the bare minimum. And again, I'm the one that there's nothing that shows up for me or the business SEO wise. And it's like that for ninety nine percent of the business too, where it's like you can find them if you look for them. If you're a pro at social media and video, I should see a ton of your stuff on social media and I should see a ton of your video. I've been working on the WordPress site and still doing like going through your course on SEO. And just I'm learning more and more the power, the power that truly holds. Like if you can even a name Google, especially mine, because it's so it's rare where it's like Key and Carthy can rank very easily. But even if it gets to somebody searches short form video help and my name pops up, the power that that has will be endless. You would think. And that's mostly true, but not really. Yeah, let me explain why. So when Facebook ads came out in May 2007, I was very lucky. I was one of the first ones there. For various reasons, because I was in Silicon Valley as well. And so I started getting really good at Facebook ads because there was no one else doing this. And the system was so simple that I could ancient with being the top guy in the world with Facebook ads because there was no one else doing it. And I wrote articles about it. I gave speakers about it. It was still very, very new. And if you Google Facebook ads, my result was number two. Number one was facebook.com slash ads, which is Facebook's own sign up page if you want to sign up for Facebook ads. I held that for quite some time. And can you imagine a couple years later, I'm getting hundreds of leads per day, hundreds of people every day saying, Hey, I'd love to hop on the phone with you and see if maybe you can help my business with Facebook ads. Any kind of business you can imagine, I was getting flooded with these requests because I went number two on Facebook ads. Do you think that's a good thing? I mean, it depends how you look at it. It was terrible. You would think it's a good thing, right? Getting yeah. hundreds of leads, thousands of these people reaching out, wanting to hire me. Why wouldn't that be a good thing? Because you want to like, you want to work with a certain client and it's kind of like goes back right. to the light. 99% of the people reaching out were people we just couldn't serve yeah. because they were a startup. They were some kind of software company. They didn't have any money. They were still pre model. I didn't want to light out in that category. So. We just got what was called the dog selection. Well, the, the random assortment of the internet versus the people I want to work with are one of two categories. One is big brands. So I love working with Nike and Microsoft and Quiznos and Red Bull, Starbucks. Those guys are so much fun to work with because they have a lot of money and they do a lot of cool things. I mean, hey, I'll just admit it. It's a lot of fun. You know, you go yeah. to Nike and I get free shoes. Like, why, why wouldn't <laughs> I want that? Right. And then number two, I like working with lighthouses, the people who are the top in the industry. So I don't want to work with, you know, no offense. I don't want to work with some random who I can work at. I want to work with the number one guy at Tommy Mello. I don't want to work with some random attorney. I don't want to work with the number one personal injury firm. All the other personal injury firms want to be like, they're like it. So those are the, the two things I want. I want big brands that are easy to work with. And I want the figureheads in each industry. So of all the people that are coming in, what's the probability that, any, that either of those conditions are going to be true, almost zero. And what am I supposed to do? Either ignore them or get on the phone with them and give them a free 30 minute consult? I can't do that. I did thousands of free consultations <laughs> just because I wanted to be nice to these people. And these people are trying to give me money and I can't sit and listen. Yeah. I would, you know, maybe send some of them, some off to friends or other people that ran different kinds of agencies and so think about creating up a direct of me. Okay. All my friends who are social media, short form video, whatever agency, put your name in the list. And then if stuff comes in, I'll just push them your way. But I, I didn't really have time to do that. And the people who wanted the leads weren't really qualified anyway. Because if you're good at marketing, then you don't need referrals. You, you don't need some. You don't need me to give you. If you're good at marketing, the fact that then you're doing a good job with your clients and people are already talking about you. So it's a catch point. We've talked about before how to get started in a lighthouse and to find kind of that first person in industry. To open that door, is it a mentor or is it just kind of like working your way up sort of thing and eventually getting to like the top person, top brand? Well, I'll tell you from my experience, it's always been a mentor. I was super lucky because I had the CEOs in American Airlines being a mentor almost 30 years ago. And because of that, he opened doors to people I would never be able to meet in them, even if I made it to the top in some other kind of career. I had instant access to the very top, which is just huge. 
I met CEOs of their companies, which then generated all kinds of deals. Defense company needed an intranet. And I happen to be there. It's like, Dennis, can you build your intranet? Okay, yeah, I'll build your intranet. <laughs> and that was all because of connections. Like everything I had was, and you, you've heard, you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you and that kind of thing. Now I heard stories of people who you know, they hustle really hard and eventually they're able to work their way to the top and get a big client. But maybe that is true, but I've never seen it really happen. I see a lot of young adults, especially, take on random clients, thinking that if they just keep working hard enough, eventually they will be successful. And I love that approach. I love the people that wake up in the morning at five o'clock. I can't do that. But my experience from seeing thousands of young adults start agencies is that doesn't work. Maybe, maybe there's the 1% exception, LeBron James, but everyone else is like trying to become a pro and they're not. Let me explain why that doesn't work. When you start as an, a new agency, you're hungry for business and you want to take on anybody. I mean, you know, you're cold calling all these random people and you need to make enough money to pay rent if you haven't moved out of your mom's house. And so you end up getting this combination of random clients. Well, you get a restaurant, you get a hairdresser, you get an attorney. Well, I just need to get some business. I just need to get some experience. And, you know, initially, let's say you started out your expertise was short form video, right? But let's say you don't have any clients. So someone else says, you know, wow, I need short form video, but I need a website. Sure, can you do that? But, yeah, 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 I could do that. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, I, I, need, I need a TikTok. To, I, I need HubSpot. So, okay, yeah, 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 I can do that. They just end up saying yes to all this stuff. And then every one of these clients is a random custom group. Pretty soon you have five or six of these random clients. You can't keep track of them. You can't hire other people and sub it out because you are ingrained in the details of that custom relationship. So it requires you did is you didn't document it. You didn't bring on these people ahead of time because you didn't have the money to hire these people. So you didn't just saying, yeah, I just, maybe if I get the money, then I'll go hire these people. We hire someone on Fiverr and they do a crappy job. So it just ends up being a dead end. And a lot of people in that situation, you, know, you can look at like Gavin Lear and Empathy Firm, where they took on a bunch of these random clients and random, random situations. They think the way to get out of that model where all these clients are churning on you and demanding refunds because they're not able to deliver because you said yes to everything. They think the answer, Keegan, is to sell more. What do you think happens when you're in that situation? You're not delivering. You're good at selling, but you're not, you haven't been able to deliver. Every client's brand be so clear business model. And you think the way out was to sell more clients. What do you think happens? Aren't you just going to burn through? You're going to ruin your reputation. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You ruin your reputation. You have to fix your core offer. You have to fix your ability to deliver first. Yeah. And that means doing one thing really well. So in America, we have in and out burden. So in and out it's famous for moving these standards. And they don't make pizza, they don't make spaghetti, they don't make steak, they don't make ribs, they don't do whatever. They just do eat hamburgers. And so you should focus, if you're a young adult and you're one person, you should focus on the one thing that you can do with eating. Do one service for one industry and have one package. That's what you have to do. If you don't do that, and, and the reason why young adults don't do that is, well, I don't want to limit myself. Because if I offer 15 different services, I can make more money, right? All bad guys will get you in trouble. I know hundreds of agencies that are seven to bridge wash. And they all agree the biggest problem to answer your question, Keegan, the young adults that try to do everything instead of niching down to one kind of customer and offering one kind of service with one package. I know personally, like I'm, I mean, I still kind of have the issue, but I'm slowly getting away from it. But if I had, there was one point where I had like 35 clients and I maybe at two of them each were in the same industry. So it was constantly just like back and forth, back and forth, researching more on the niche, trying to understand it. But I had no clue. Like, and it was just all different. Just getting a you just get into trouble. And it's like, well, I wasn't able to perform to those clients. But now it's like, now that I have a core of genuine businesses that I understand, I'm able to do a way better job for them. And same with my team. Yeah. For Kayla Billion is the top speaker. For NAFA, the National Association of Insurance and Pharma Bikers. So all the insurance agents from the United States, they go to this conference. This is the largest organization, the oldest organization. And because Caleb is a shining example, as, as someone who sells life insurance, he can sell other life insurance agents, honestly, because 
He is a high producing life insurance agent. Now, if I were to try to do marketing for a life insurance agent, let's say even if I knew how to do it, I wouldn't have any credibility because who's going to, who's going to be more credible, a high, a high producing life insurance agent or me who does all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Right? So then what I do is I use Caleb as my life model. And he is my original client six years ago or whatnot. He ended up a dollar loan, one minute video, he started his podcast, started repurposing content, became a keynote speaker, didn't speak a real, lost his number one best selling book. There's all those items that we do when we help personal brands. And now he's able to sell products to other life insurance. So A, he's a successful life insurance agent with the whole team. But B, because of that, he's able to sell marketing programs to other life insurance agents because they respect that he's a life insurance agent too. So we're able to sell under his brand, not my brand. And so I sell under lots of other people's brands because they are the life out. The beauty is once you have that life out, you don't have to sell under your name anymore. I'm going to sell under the name that's already well known. Why wouldn't I? Or let's say that I actually built the very best, you know, hockey skate, for example, right? And then we call it, you know, Dennis's hockey skate. You can call it Dennis's hockey skate, but what if I then license it to Bauer, right? Yeah. And then Bauer or Nike was then selling the skate, and all the famous athletes were wearing my skate, but they didn't need to know that I was going to build the ice skate. What's more powerful, Dennis's skate or Bauer's new skate? Exactly. And Bauer, 100%. I'd put it under the lighthouse. So I always put stuff under the lighthouse. And then guess what happens when you put it under the lighthouse? The lighthouse brand has more power. The lighthouse brand has a bigger list. The lighthouse brand is more trusted. The lighthouse brand. But these young adults feel like they have to make up a name. So they spend all this time worrying about the name and the logo and the colors. No one gives a shit about it. They care about whether you can deliver. So most people, when they start their business, they're worried about all the nonsense that's appeared in Focus on delivery. It doesn't matter what the name of your agency is. Vision management, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> deliver. All we care about is can you deliver, right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's like the biggest thing. And first few months in, I mean, I'm not, I'm still less than a year in. I'm still figuring everything out. But before it was like, it was always came down and just, oh, I sell more, I'll make more money. Never understood why clients didn't want to work with me. I'm like, I'm doing an okay job. Like it's could be worse. Like, but then it's like, now that it's started to properly deliver, started to implement genuine strategies and increase my credibility, it's it's night and day with how business is just all together. Like it's as cliche yeah. as it's, everybody says, deliver for your clients first and then everything else will come. That is That rings true and that hits home every single time. And I'm so proud of you because not only are you doing that with the short form video, and that's great that you produce the video, but you're boosting those posts so they generate traffic and it generates real business results for your clients. And now your clients are happy. Guess what? They're going to continue to pay. But even people that are like you keep getting initiated and most successful and being able to sell and deliver with your short form video, you still have this issue with time. Well, okay, great. You made all these videos now. Maybe they'll do it again for another month. Or they'll, they'll do it again for another month or two. But then they churn on it. You know what the average churn is on social media and short form agency? 60 to 90 days. Yeah. And I would think on short form, the renewal is single digits. It's super low. You get you get the money for the initial package. And so I get that. So when I see short form video folks struggling, they think, well, I know these guys churn out. So I'm going to try to get as much as I can up front because I know they're going to churn out. Yeah. And all that does is reinforce is that Who's going to want to pay another 10 grand for month two or month three? You know what the answer is because you want to dig a value. Well, guess what? After you produce the video, you got to run ads. So it's actually being seen. Exactly. And now they'll continue to pay you every month instead of, oh, I've got to make more videos every month or two hours every month and whatever. No one wants to see that. I don't care if it's, you have this great process where I just need two hours a month and we'll make videos. They don't want to do that. I don't even want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that either. And I run the agency itself. It's just want the videos. I want the winners and then just push the ads against and then just watch the business roll in. The ad strategy of the dollar a day and the entire thing that is honestly for anybody doing video, they need to implement that. It is it's business changing. It's life changing seriously. And it's unbelievably simple to do. I've documented everything, created SOPs. I'm hiring out account managers this week to do. It is so, so easy to do. It's a very little secret that you know, but most young adults don't know. When you start a short form agency, 
and you start bringing in these clients. And these clients believe that there's social media because this social media works. And because you're a young adult and you must understand all the new stuff. They don't, I don't, you know, I'm too old. I don't even understand, right? So they trust you in the process. You know, you sit down on Zoom or whatever and make a series of these videos. You're team processing. So let's assume that you have a team that can lose and you're able to do all that and get it posted. There's no traffic because most clients, they don't have any sort of following on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, or whatever it is. So even though your content's amazing, it gets no reach. So I love working with the big brands because when we do a campaign for Nike, organically, it's going to work, right? Also why I like working with bigger clients. But to your point, if you're working with clients who are not big, and you, let's say you do do a good job repurposing that video, you've got to use Dollar Lee to get some reach. Now, you know who their audience is, who their target audience is. But you already should know if you're making the video, right? If you're already re repurposing the video, you already know their strategy, goal, content, targeting. Then the next natural step for whoever's posting the video is run ads against it. They, they can't, the client couldn't hire another agency to run ads because whoever's crafting the video, the strategy of what the topics are, deciding what the hopes are, the cut points, and what the you know, calls to action are, is best positioned to run ads. Because it's not that you're good at editing video. It's that you understand the strategy of that business because you've done life insurance agents over and over and over again. So if you start with strategy that leads naturally to the content production being tracked up and running ads, then you're going to be able to measure that. And because you know it works for one life insurance agent, you can repeat that for a hundred others. And now you've got skill. If you hire the VAs, if you have the SOPs, if you recognize up front that it can't be you all the time, even if you wake up at five in the morning, you can't do it all yourself. Yeah, that's how you win. Like me personally, in regards to not doing everything yourself, it was honestly a realization when I was gone uh, last weekend, a couple weekends, whatever it was. And I just wanted to take a break for a weekend and see what happened and then come back. And it was just putting out fires left, right and center. And then it was like, OK, it's time to really hire out because I need to do tasks that move the needle forward rather than just maintenance all day. A lot of people get like, trapped in basically their their entrepreneurship, their agency, whatever it turns into a job. It's actually worse. You, you yeah. know why being an agency owner is worse than having a job as an employee? When, you have, when you're an employee, you just have one boss. <laughs> <laughs> when you have an agency, how many bosses do you have? <laughs> Work four hours in the beach, in Bali with just a laptop, you know, running your social media agency. That's a lie. The only people that say that are the people that make money off of selling you that program. You're good at selling, right? You get people on this 15 minute discovery call and you talk to them about their thing and eventually you sell them on your program, right? Well, guess what? You can do that. But then you need to have two other roles. You need to have account managers to do the ongoing operations and onboarding. And you need these workers to do fulfillment. And they're the ones that edit the video, build the web pages, do analytics, then that reports and whatnot. So I consider them waiters and cooks, people to talk to the clients people that work behind the scenes in the kitchen. And so if you're out there selling, you can keep selling and doing webinars and closing and all that. And then once you close someone, then that client has to fill out this onboarding form, everything about their business, about getting access, these different things. Of course, you pre-record these videos. So welcome. This is Keegan Carter. I'm so glad you got my super duper package. Right. And what we're going to do over the next three weeks is this onboarding sequence. You're going to give us access to your Facebook, your website, blah, blah, blah. You're soon going to see an email from your account manager. Her name is Kathy. You know, and Kathy's going to work with you. We're going to set up a meeting every week to talk about, you know, for five minutes what your status is. And you can expect once we get this initial premiums of whatever done, we're going to, you know, record a one hour Zoom. And this is how we're going to prepare. Before we do this, we're going to need these particular things. We're going to ask a series of questions like this. Once we finish doing that video together, and a week a week later, our team's going to come back with the transcript and what we think of the key points in your video that we're going to turn into things on your Facebook and Twitter and blah, blah, blah. And so you're just, you're pre-recording, you're pre-framing the process and setting expectations so they know that once they're done with you, because you sold them, you're the figurehead. There's a natural handoff to the account manager. So from here on out, you know, Rebecca is going to be the one that is going to take care of you. And now, of course, I'm here at the strategy level. I'm overseeing everything. And then we have other people that the account manager is, is interfacing with to make sure we're editing videos the right way and whatnot. So if you let people know that, 
then you can continue to do what you're doing without having to worry about operations or credit cards failing or clients complaining because the clients know that they can go to Kathy or whoever it is. But if you don't have any account managers, who's the account manager? You are. So the thing is, it costs money to hire an account manager. It costs money to hire video editors. If you haven't documented how you want to do videos, then you can't hire video editors because they won't do it the right. They'll do it their way, which is not the way you want to do. It. Okay. When you're doing north of fifteen to twenty thousand, like definitely when you're past twenty thousand a month, you need to have an account manager. And see, that's where I'm. I'm in that. I'm kind of in that range right now. And like I like I mentioned, like I'm pulling like twelve hour days, like. Um, I've ha have three interviews already for account managers and everything like that. And it's, I'm happy to get my time back and actually put like my effort and some time into move. Like I said, moving the needle forward. Last week, we hired three more account managers and these guys are incredible. They have great English. They're on top of the details. They look super hard. They prepare the reports. They've gone through our account manager training. They have to score a certain like 45 out of 50 or whatever to be able to pass. Like they've done everything and they're doing a great job on accounts that are spending more than $10,000 a month with us. Even one of them is spend, one of the clients is spending $35,000 a month with us with their retainer. And I have, that's so big that I have just one account manager taking care of that one client instead of one account manager having like 20 clients. How much money do you think these account managers make? $380 a month. <laughs> How much is your time worth, Keegan? <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. saw that and I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's a level one thing. So we have a, we have a nine level system. So they started at level one, yeah. which is basically like $380, $400. I have to, you guys are so amazing. Like you could look up these people. You could see they're the ones that um, Sana and Manal and Tyroor. And now I just hired Jake who's from the United States who cost me a little bit more. These guys, they started super low, but after a couple of weeks, well, after a week, they've done so well. Like those three account managers that were at $380, they're $1,400 now, level four. But then level five is like $2,000. And it just goes up. And yeah. our leveling system, there's clear requirements on what they have to do to meet those levels. Basically, those requirements are not arbitrary. They're in alignment with client success. Yep. So the, the ratings determine, I mean, of course they should be, right? That's gamification. If you know how an account manager makes more money in our system, once they become a solid account manager, they train up and hire other account managers. So if you want to move from level four to level five, you have to train up three other account managers, or th sorry, three project managers at level three to then become account managers at level four, to become people managers hired by at level five. They have this okay. whole system. So for you to advance, let's say, Keegan, you're a level three project manager. Yeah. And you're making $1,000 a month which yeah. is not bad the Philippines, right? But you would like to make $1,400. I mean, that's a good job to go from $1,000 to $1,400, right? You want to go from level three to level yep. four in our system. How Moten do it all you to be able to help some of these other people that are stuck currently at level one or level three in the system be able to move up to level three doing the job that you've been doing for the last month or so? How motivated are you to help them? Could be a lot more motivated. And who do you, who do you think would do a better job at helping these other people level up? me i'm busy doing all kinds of other stuff or yep. someone else who always an account manager and a sphere like that yeah you, you we want someone who's just wherever you are let's say you're in level five we want someone who is just one or two levels above to be able to help you if you're a level one and you're brand new you started you don't want you don't want help from a level nine like me because that doesn't really make any sense you want help from like a level two or level three right? yeah and so that starts to work when you have more than 15 people. Okay. Now, if you only have like two or three people, then the levels kind of don't make any sense because there's no, there needs to be enough people where people can see that there's movement going up. There's unlimited opportunity for people to move up. Okay. In a regular corporation, there's like only so many spots or you and I are like competing for this one spot. It's not like that at all because it's all based on the performance. As long as we can increase the performance of the underlying client, we can make more money. So everything we have in our system it's about having people play tied towards the client performance. Okay. So like you said, everything performance based, basically the better better the job they do for the clients, the more chance they have to move up. Do you agree that it makes sense that the, the compensation that their people have could be based on how successful the clients are? 
Yes, I do agree. Okay, good. Well, then, are you measuring how successful the clients are? How are you measuring them? How many videos are going out? How many leads they're getting? How many, what do you measure? Because if you're doing short form video and you're not measuring the client's business result, but you're measuring like how many TikToks they're posting, or you're po how many Twitter tweets there are, or whatever, that's not the business result. But if you're tying to, to, to their actual sale or the actual lead or the actual thing that makes them money, and then you tie that, for how your people are getting paid, now you have incentive alignment. That's what we like to do. But that, that's why we have this measurement. That's why we have boosted. Fine, you could pay people. If you pay people, let's say they're a really good video editor, and you pay them just on how many videos they edited per day, then they would just edit as many videos as they could, but, and they wouldn't even know if they're any good or not. Yeah. Because there's no measurement about whether the, the videos actually had an impact. Yeah, of course, you're going to measure the, the output and volume, but you want to measure the business result at the same time. And that's that's where um, mid-size agencies get in trouble. Like the, the small agencies don't even have the structure because they don't even have the people or the SOPs. Yeah. But once you first, once you then get past that point of having some SOPs, like maybe a little further along where you are right now, but you're pretty close. You're like almost there. Then the yeah. next step is because you know, this step where you're at right now is just you know, if you have an SOP, you're measuring how many things people are doing today, which is great. You have to do that. Yeah. But the next step is let's measure the impact. So inside the Google Analytics, are we measuring their leads? Are we measuring, you know, their rankings? Are we measuring their sales? Are we measuring something right? yeah. beyond just how many videos did we post or how many impressions did we get? We care about sales. And so when you position your agency, you're not just there doing Alex Ramothi style videos. Is anybody yeah. inside of you guys? You understand their strategy. And because you do that, you can charge five times more, 10 times more, because you understand that business is strategy. The business doesn't want to hear about, do you use Premiere or can you do Alice or Moses style TikTok? They want to know, can you create short, create short form video that actually reflects business, their business strategy in their industry? We've done it for other companies in that industry. And you can drive business results. You care about measuring the business result, not on how many likes you get on Instagram. Now you're, now you're talking the business language. Now you're talking to a business owner and the way they want to be talked to. Yeah. They don't know what an Instagram reel is. <laughs> they don't care. No. The, the toughest thing about doing, doing short form video or any sort of video, it seems like it's converting that into leads is the most difficult part because a ton of people will just sit there and just scroll forever, forever, forever on whatever platform they're on. But it's, it's being able to get somebody to stop on the video, consider it, and then get them to buy or whatever it may be is it's truly a skill. Cause I, I get it. Like there's, there's some kind of skill to be being able to create hooks to get people's attention, right? That's what you said. There's some yeah. kind of skill to being able to persuade and convert someone to sign up, become a lead or buy, right? Yeah. yeah okay. There's some skill in doing that. But if you're working with a different set of clients, how can you, and, and each one has, has a different way of attracting attention has a different value proposition you know for their ideal customer profile usp whatever the you know whatever yeah. acronym you want to use towards how do they sell down the different stages of the funnel i have one simple tip that has served me very very well it's maybe millions of dollars it's this take someone who already had content performed against the particular audience but whatever their offer is against a particular pain point a particular customer base if they already have that, you've already won because then it's a matter of just assembling ingredients in the right way. If you're taking on a client and you don't have clarity on what exactly people are buying from that client, proof, not just like they think they're good, but tons of proof. Like for the Golden State Warriors, when we took them on, I could see exactly who was buying and why. Yeah. So I found the winning creatives. I didn't have to spend all this money testing. I didn't have to come up with new ideas. I didn't have to be creative. I found stuff that was already working Yeah, because they tried all kinds of random things. Oh, you know, family four pack, you know, mom and dad and two kids and you get four hot dogs and you can choose four games and it's $400. Yeah. Didn't work. People didn't want to do that or, you know, deals for box seats or just outside parking or, you know, bobblehead nights. So I didn't have to try to figure out what I thought would work because I went back to look at the stats and I could easily see what was working. We did a campaign for Starbucks, you know, Starbucks, Frappuccino. Yeah. They spent $14 million with us on promoting Frappuccino. 
Now, most people think, well, let's come up with all these ideas of what we can do for Frappuccino. You know, like, look, we could have a thing where if the temperature goes goes above 100 degrees, then buy one, get one free Frappuccino. What a great idea, right? Yeah. We did that. And we tried other sorts. We, we uh, said, you know, in, in California, where there's a greater Hispanic population, let's do the caramel macchiato, because that's more of a Hispanic kind of flavor. It feels more towards, like, teenagers. Let's try to bring teenagers in during the afternoon, because typically Starbucks... You know, we're selling during the morning because people are trying to get their caffeine things. So let's try to get more sales during the afternoon. Let's push Frappuccino. So all these people are coming with all these ideas. And then meanwhile, I said, well, let's look at the data. I mean, these are all great ideas. But look at the, look at the data. Who's actually buying Frappuccino? And I did a little research on Facebook. And I found what was working. And I said, here's a winning creative. Here's some winning phrases against this winning audience. We already have the answer. And that's what we did. And we drove tons of sales off of it. We took creatives that already, we took an offer and a creative that already worked yeah. against an audience that already worked. So I only take on clients if they have an offer that works against an audience that works. Because if they don't have that alignment, then guess what? You're not doing advertising with short form video or video editing. You are actually trying to build their business. You're trying to figure out their strategy. If their strategy is in place, it is very easy to win. Here's the point I'm making. I take on businesses that already have an established strategy. They don't have to be a billion dollar company. Yeah. But they already have to be delivering value clearly in a, in a set package against a very particular audience. Yeah. If that's the case, easy to multiply. Because all, all you're doing with the short form video, dollar a day ads, all you're doing is you're multiplying something that's already working. That's it. Yeah. We're not trying to come up with something new. If we're trying to come up with something new, now you're basically an entrepreneur with them. You're, you're basically, you're like a partner. In, you know, you're a fellow entrepreneur inside their business and you don't want to do that. Take yeah. companies where it's already working. Take someone who's already doing $5 million, take them to $10 million. Don't take someone from $5,000 to $10,000. Or worse, someone who doesn't even have any money and that they're counting on you to be a magical unicorn. Mm-hmm. Again, biggest issue I've had was you're taking on anybody and anybody that's willing to pay me because it's hungry for business at the beginning. And then it's it's ju- just churn and burn because I've, it's people that are giving me their last thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars and basically just we're desperate. He can make me money, make the business work and just be, oh, they're willing to pay me. I'm going to do the best job I can. Obviously, I don't build their business for them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work. My best clients are the ones that have their business together genuinely making money have their strategy like everything you mentioned everything's just so much more seamless for both parties involved i've just been really lucky because i i have started working on companies that are doing really well so like why wouldn't would you rather play on a winning team the yeah. winning team is winning they're making more money they treat you better and i've heard other people they they scorn at what i say and they'll say yeah but i like to help the small businesses or you know even worse on their website they say we take on clients of any size, of any budgets, large <laughs> or small. We'll take you on because we care for everybody. Yeah. I can guarantee you they're not making any money. The, their clients aren't making any money. And I guarantee you that agency is not making any money. The money back guarantee, all that does is put into someone's mind the fact that you think you're probably going to mess this thing up. We never, we never have any guarantees because we're not going to mess this thing up. As always, thank you. You always give me way too much information and way too much value it's i feel i just i need a way to repay you yeah yeah you're the best game